Ah, yes. Good morning, everyone. Hello. Um, I've just realised I haven't got my camera on yet, so hold on a second. Um, good start. Video capture. Let's try that. Oh goodness. I'll shrink that down so we don't just. Bam. Yes. So once again, good morning. Uh, yeah so hi guys welcome back to another one of the, the digital skills sessions um, the one last Tuesday was e-safety and now we're on to why am I on Facebook Google yeah now we're on to um, online profile and employability is, is what we're up to at the moment so today the plan the, the rough the rough plan that I've got because I've got a bunch of resources I'm just gonna sort of go through them um, step by step on the morning um, so we're gonna look have a little look at like things like Facebook and LinkedIn but specifically your online profile so like imagine it like your little digital footprint that you, you're leaving behind um, and then we'll have a look at like the platforms like Facebook and LinkedIn and um, indeed and monster and all that sort of thing um, where you can search actually search for jobs so more and more often now like the big social media websites have like a job listing like feature on them um, which it can be really useful but it can also be a little bit daunting because obviously Facebook does like a billion other things as it is so um, yeah I'm just gonna crop your camera a little bit so I've got a bit more room so yeah um, got, got some of that plan got some privacy and security stuff as well so there's a, there'll be a little bit of overlap with what Ella was talking about in the other stream so that should all start making sense to you guys um, I'm gonna show you some of it in practice so we're gonna log into like Facebook and, and go on like the post limit and stuff I'm gonna have a quick search through your security settings I have set up a test email as well so I will just sign into that also there's Daniel in the background just keep, just keep right, it guys. Back enjoy, to work. Enjoy your session there, guys. Work, work. Slowly but surely, everyone's returning. Um, yeah, so morning, guys. Hi, Sue. Hi, Amelia. Um, I'm going to sign in with this other account. Um, if I can remember the password. So, obviously, when I'm signing up for stuff with my test account, you would sign up with yours, like your actual account. Um, so, I'll just call it Test Media Savvy 30 or something like that. Uh, do not send any emails to this one because they will not be picked up. This is a completely throwaway Gmail, which I've already typed the password in all wrong. Just a fantastic start. Um, yeah, so I just set up this test email account. So I'm just going to be doing some stuff with that, um, setting up different online profiles, and I'm going to have a little look at them, as well as some employability stuff. Um, but we will we will get onto that. If anyone has any questions at any point, give me a shout. Um, I am, so I'm not being ignorant, going to put my phone on the silent as well. On a do not disturb, sorry. So I'm already here, it's buzzing away. So. Right, cool. I don't know why I've got my headphones in, to be honest, because I'm not playing any videos or anything. Um, so yeah, we'll get started. So first thing I have got is having a look at um, how to create an account on the likes of LinkedIn. So I'll show you my LinkedIn now, um, but what we're going to do is sign out and we're going to get something else. When I sign up with a new one, um, so obviously at the moment when we're talking about online profiles, we've got. If I click onto my profile here, this is my my um, my LinkedIn profile, and can you see you get some indication of how strong it is? Um, so, so the profile strength is intermediate on that one. Um, ideally, it would be it would be better, but LinkedIn is quite good at helping you out um, in terms of. Like it tells you what information to fill in so that your profile looks better when people are looking at it. Facebook's not so good at this. Um, so if I jump over to Facebook now and just go to my media savvy one that I've got. Um, which by the way, if you're looking to get in touch, is one of the one of the ways. It, Facebook's probably one of the better ways to grab um, a quick chat with us. So this is your Facebook profile. So I've got mine in dark mode. Yours will probably yours might be in light mode, which is just under the settings. I don't know if you guys can see that on. No, you kind of cause me stupid heads in the way. Hang on, let's get me stupid head on that side. So, on the there's a little drop down there on account, um, and I've got dark mode on. But if you turn that off, it just turns it back to the default Facebook view. But all that white space gives me a massive headache, so I have it on on dark mode. 
Um, so yeah, Facebook, not so, it, you can, it's giving you the opportunity to edit your details pretty much all over the place, but it doesn't indicate like how good your profile is like LinkedIn does. So LinkedIn's pretty good at, if I hover over it, it'll tell us what I've got. So I've got the steps completed. I've got location, skills, uh, position, industry, photo, education summary, which is all the different steps I've added. But if I drop that down, it's going to say, um, see what your summary could look like. Writing a summary can be hard. Um, and we've created one to get you started. So that they even like give you little bits and pieces of text um, to drop into your profile as well. So it, it can be um, really helpful to just go through. Um, the thing that gets to me when online is all the cookies and ads. Yeah, so LinkedIn, Facebook is, is probably the worst for it in terms of social media, in terms of adverts. Um, so like this, you get this, what we call sponsored content. So you see the little sponsored thing, and it was next to the globe, it's disappeared now, but this is basically an advert that's being promoted here. LinkedIn does have them. Um, let's see if I can do a quick scroll. Yeah, so there, that's a promoted one as well, but it tends to be more business related. Um, Facebook, it can be literally anything. Um, it, there, so that there's a one for walk as crisps, which I'm, you know, all right. I quite like Watsits, but I'm not gonna go and buy a pack of them now based on the advert, but and yeah, so you will, You'll get adverts and stuff um, on both. Basically, you can't you can't really escape it. Um, but if we are looking at we're looking at your profile today rather than the feed. But I'm sure Ella in the um, in the social media session will show you how to manage things and report things like adverts that are like malicious or whatever. Um, which I think is can you remember the the, the social media session is Daniel. It's money matters uh, next week. Isn't money it? matters next week. I think it might be the one after that. Okay, so not next Tuesday, but the Tuesday yeah. after. There is a social media one. So yeah, so very good um, point. It is like a digital CV, LinkedIn, pretty much. Um, so if I scroll through my LinkedIn profile, um, it's telling me there how I can strengthen it, um, keep your profile updated to be discovered and grow your network. Um, it tells you how many people have viewed your profile, how many times you've if you, you've appeared in a search. Um, it shows you the activity so I congratulated someone on I don't actually know what it was to be honest oh right, okay yeah so I congratulated someone on like an anniversary in a job um, I've listed all the experience I've got there which as you can see it's uh, <laughs> it's alright um, and then you've got things like skills and endorsements so where you would have on your CV you would have like skills um, you can put down different industry knowledge subjects on whatever you're applying for and then people can endorse you based on that so the more endorsements you have for something obviously the better you look when it comes to that um, you follow interest as well which which gives like the the sort of algorithm that LinkedIn runs on it'll show you things based on this <clears throat> to be honest mine could do with a bit of a, um, a bit of a revamp to be to be totally true if I don't use LinkedIn too often I every now and then I go on and I absolutely blitz my profile <laughs> like yeah. and, I, and I completely redo it all like there I've got so I've got that's my actual logo for my my business uh, Daniel I don't know if you've seen that actually I think I have because um, it kicks about all the time I, I saw it uh, was in the toilet room. yeah oh yeah like, yeah, yeah. someone stuck into the ceiling in the toilet <laughs> yeah. just like a little little media savvy uh, uh what do you call it like easter egg yeah it's cool bro so yeah so this is basically like your um your online cv and it, it's it's really good and like i say that what's handy about it is you get notifications based on someone viewing your profile so if i click on those people who viewed my profile um they're all there one of them's ella clasper um if you're retired you possibly don't need linkedin what it's quite good for is if you are doing any voluntary work as well or if you're involved in any, or you want to get in, but in, in touch with like companies, um, because companies tend to use LinkedIn quite often, um, because you can get in touch with like, so Dan, for example, does is quite active on LinkedIn, whereas he hasn't really got like a media savvy Facebook for himself. He's got the his LinkedIn profile. So let's make him famous. There we go. There he is, man. How happy he is on there. Um, but he posts articles and stuff. Um, all about like how what media savvy you're up to and, and any new projects we get go on there. So if you are looking to get in touch with say like charities or different um, like managerial like higher up staff at a, at a company, you can get in, you can reach out on LinkedIn. Um, should we just endorse Dan for something like random as out? Um, media production. There, there you go. Oh no, I've already done that. Whoops. <laughs> Highly skilled. So there. So. 
on his skill, I clicked on it. Um, and how good is Dan at media production? Highly skilled. And I can submit that. And then now it'll come up that I have endorsed him for media production. For some reason. I don't know why I've done that. But that's how you do it. So if it is someone that you know and you know they're good at something, you can do that as well. Um, if you've worked with someone on a particular project, you can go on their profile and do that as well. Um, so that is like basically what we're going to be looking at your profile today we're not going to be looking at how to use linkedin because this i could spend about four hours and i'd probably still miss half of it um so we're just going to be looking at like the little profile builder and the same on facebook because and the reason i'm, I'm talking about facebook in relation to like employability is because if i show you the link so facebook now has this this jobs platform built into it um so literally facebook.com forward slash jobs takes you to this little search box here. Um, and can you see there, we're just, it's popping up with a bunch of different jobs on it. Um, <laughs> oh God. <laughs> yeah, we'll ignore that one. <laughs> Unless that's what you want to do. You would never guess what jobs has popped up there. What's that? Yeah, yeah I, I can't even look. <laughs> like you couldn't write it could you i just i clicked straight on the search page and that's like the third job down so yeah well um i i will avoid looking at that job i think because i don't want that link associated with my profile in any way um there's a the one at kfc that seems nice and safe i'll endorse you for that one yeah day. uh yeah you can do just straight on my profile i've got uh i've got all the skills to pay the bills and that Honestly, like right, you can, right. how uh, when you try to do something about online profiles and being appropriate, and then that's like the third job down. Well, this is this is Facebook, oh, so there's the difference. Yeah, yeah. There's the difference straight away. <laughs> LinkedIn very professional. Facebook yeah. just anything goes yeah, really. Um, yeah. So I right. bear in mind there might be some jobs on there not so not so much appropriate for um, streaming on YouTube. <laughs> yeah, you can't do that one from home either. I don't think. Uh, I'll put you maybe you can actually so anyway so I've clicked onto this KFC team member part time one um, and I assume I'm going to click apply now and I have a really bad feeling that it's going to take us to another site oh no so there we go right so <clears throat> on Facebook it loads this little form and this is similar to what like LinkedIn is um, or what, sorry not what LinkedIn is what Indeed does where you know you can click apply through Indeed <clears throat> So because I've got all this information in my profile, it, that that's the name of my profile, that's my email address. Obviously then I haven't added my phone number or city, um, but it's got my work experience in there, it's got my education, and that's all information I've filled in earlier on. So it, it just drags that across and then I can add like a little note about, can I add a note in there? Oh no, this one doesn't. But I have to submit me um, terms and conditions. So basically, you're using your Facebook profile to apply for jobs if you are going through this, this method as well. And again, that'll count towards um, voluntary opportunities as well. So I think if I, if I go back to the search thing um, and I just go, oh, there. So there's the job type as well. So you've got contract, volunteer, internship, part-time, full-time. So oops, I click um, volunteer. I imagine there's lots of places looking for volunteers at the moment. Um, there's always a lot of charities and like there are things like football teams and things like that I always need some kind of volunteers um there's a dog care a dog cuddler wanted as well there you go part-time dog cuddler um uh, so yeah so that's the the like overview of that linkedin does have one as well so linkedin does have a jobs page which to be honest is probably a little bit more like robust so it's a little bit more tried and tested than um facebook's one but you just search so suggested searches here are coming based off what i've been doing and what i've got on my profile but for some reason it wants us to be a mathematics tutor and i really don't know why okay cool um so yeah that's based on the information that i've input in my profile so i'm gonna i'm gonna sign out of these two and i'm and what i'm gonna do then is i'm gonna set up a new one and show you what the like initial screens look like so if i just sign out of both of these and uh, just close these tabs down um, there's my actual personal account as well that I very very rarely use uh, if I'm going too quick for any of this as well um, 
Yeah, Amelia, you'll have to let us know. And Andy's saying, uh, ask what job you've nearly applied for. I assume it was one of them, one of them situations where you've accidentally clicked on something and, and then uh, it's gone and you kind of take it back, sort of thing. Um, yeah, you'll have to you'll have to let us know if it's if it's appropriate enough for me to read out. <laughs> Um, so basically, I'm gonna. This is what it would look like if you came back to Facebook. Obviously, you'd have people who've logged in on the computer there. Um, you come to create a new account. Um, first name. I'm just gonna call this Media Savvy Test. Now you wouldn't do that. You would sign up with your proper name and stuff. Uh, I'm just gonna make like a random as hell password. Date of birth can be the first of September. Oh, uh, oh. what's happening there then? First of September, nineteen ninety. Okay, fine. Um, we'll go. We'll, we'll tell them that we're a male. So I'm just gonna. That's that's as simple as it is. Fill in that little form in. Um, click sign up. We require that everyone. Oh, what's your problem? <laughs> ah, right. Okay. Um, okay, I'm just gonna call it Hatham Test then. Hmm. Oh, it's really angry at us now. <laughs> I don't want to create a Facebook page. Um. Okay, I'll just use my actual name then. Yeah, so they've emailed me a code to that Gmail. So that, that's probably what they're going to do from now on. So if you don't get that, you just click send again. But all I'm going to do is open a new tab along the top uh, and go to my Gmail, which is this this like dud one that I've created. After today's session, I am going to delete this, um, this account. So when you're doing it, Obviously, most of you guys probably know how to do um, how to set up an account, but I want to take you through the little profile builder that pops up. So you get in your account, and then this is the little window that I was talking about before. So this is like a almost step by step guide of how to how you're going to build it. Um, so what I would do in that case, Sue, is I would um, I would possibly make one. But have it on like private, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go through how to change your settings to private, like have everything sort of privated out. And I will recover that as well in the social media one, but you'll go into a little bit more detail. Um, you, if you were applying for jobs and positions and trying to message people, um, like based on different projects and, and things like that, I would probably have your real name on there. And um, what I would do is I would lock down the settings of it so that it's completely like anonymous, basically. Um, you don't have to have like your own picture and stuff on. Like on my LinkedIn, I haven't, really, I haven't got me picture. It's just a logo um, that sort of reflects my, my face a little bit. I need to update the glasses because I got new glasses as well. Um, but so here you get this what we call a profile builder, um, and it's asking you to add a picture. So if I click add picture, um, I will just grab. There's a there's a hand drawn picture that Ella made of me, so that'll do. There we go. So that, that is going on the website, that picture. Um, but for now, it can be my Facebook one. So you, you can hear search people that you know. And for now, we're not going to do that. What we are going to do is we're going to go on this privacy tour. Um, so who sees what you share? So it's telling you there the difference between um, public and friends. You also get more options. So for example, you can share a photo with just your friends or make it public. Choose who sees what you share right where you post. So we'll go next. Um, explains a little bit about tagging um, and a tag creates a link to the person's timeline and may share your post with their friends uh, we'll go next so there's a little thing this is quite important the privacy shortcuts um, but we are going to go back into that and then we'll next and this one as well what apps are allowed to access and what they can do as well um, so your friends can see apps you use with Facebook so Apps access your profile, public profile. So again, anything you put on that profile, these apps can potentially access it. Um, 
they shouldn't ever be able to post on your behalf anymore because Facebook sort of removed that feature or, or tried the very best to remove that feature. Because what was happening is well, people were like downloading games, signing in with Facebook, and then um, like it was posting loads of like ads on on their behalf to all the friends and stuff. Um, so took the little privacy to it. I am gonna just go onto my profile by just clicking on my name there, um, and then here. So it's gonna pop, this little pop-up will come up. So select the photo to appear at the top of your profile. Uh, I'm gonna skip that one, um, and then here. So similar, similar to LinkedIn. Um, which city do you live in? So it's going to start asking you a bunch of questions um, based on like the information that's missing from your profile. So um, we're going to click on that. So yes, and I don't do I want that information? So it's asked us where do you live? I don't actually live there, but we'll say city of Sunderland. Um, so I've ticked that yes, but it's asking us where do, do I want that information to be public? Uh, probably not. So I can stick that on only me and save that. And now only I'll be able to see that. Uh, which city are you from? Again, we'll just tick Sunderland. I uh, also want to make that only me um, save. So where did you go to high school? Um, oh God. So you could just you could just pick one of them. Do you know what I mean? You could just let's just say there. Yeah, I might want that one on public. Uh, which university did you go to and again I might want that on public if I'm going to be applying for jobs I might want my education to be public and just make sure you guys can see that so what organization do you work for so I can guess I can type in that and I, again might want that to be on public and just hit save so on my intro now uh, What is your position? Um, let's just do a tutor. Your profile has been updated. So if I click see update, it'll refresh. So now in the about section, all that information is there. Um, some of it's um, private, but if I, if I hover over any of it, so if I click on some of them here, I can add more as well. Um, I can also see edit the privacy option. So if I hover over that, click edit, brings that box down um, I can add more information like a description I can say I don't currently work here and then I can add a year to the to start and end I can change the privacy as well so you can do things like specific friends um, or just friends or public if you are applying for jobs so I went through in that on that KFC advert and I clicked apply it takes all the public information so only the only the information in here that's public will go into that little mini application form um, but it's quite handy to come in if you are going to be doing it and um, edit this information. What I would say as well is a lot of people have like just like daft stuff in here. Like um, I've seen some of them with like um, like party animal as the like job description and stuff. So if you are applying for jobs, are you looking to use your profile as like a professional profile? I would try and avoid doing stuff like that. Um, so there's a little bit in this presentation that Ella used the other day, and it, I just want to go to it now. Um, where is it at? Photographs. So it's on the photographs bit, and she sort of she did explain how to do that. Um, but it's this this slide here that I always come back to whenever we do any kind of training like this. Um, before I do that, I want to hear this quick story from uh, Amelia. So seen the advertisement for Umber Lumbers. Standing dressed on a stage looking for people that were no farther than four, four foot five. I thought I'd love to be in Charlie in the Chocolate Factory. So clocked on the article and it was, all right. So it was to be an escort. Yeah. So <laughs> with that in mind, when you're looking at job adverts, please, please, please read the description. <laughs> you need to read very carefully before you um before you, you click on anything and apply for anything, because uh, that that could have been quite the mix up, I think. Um, so yeah, just back to your profile and what you're uploading. So obviously, when when you're building your profile like this, it tells you that you know add a cover photo and it's popping up telling you add a profile picture and stuff. Um, this is something to bear in mind. So be careful with what photographs you choose to share on social media, particularly if you're looking for work. Um, some photos can paint you in a negative or unprofessional light. Um, and and this one, so it, drunk nights out, the fine. 
um, to have them on there and even be tagged in them. But you probably don't want to do is have them set to public. So you want to go in and edit them um, and edit. So you click on the photo and edit, and then you can change the um, like the setting on them. So you can have it to specific friends. Obviously, this account I've just made, so I haven't got any friends. It's a bit sad. Um, but you could just specify certain people to see it, so you could type their names and then only they could see this photo. Um, you can also add like a description and, and where you were, um, that sort of thing. So yeah, that's your your Facebook profile in a in a sort of nutshell. Um, you can there is so much you can add, so you can add like details about yourself, um, so when you're about you, nicknames, favorite quotes, life events as well. So that can be one where you can put out like a little story. Um, based on like your, your employment history sort of thing so okay I left college in this year and then I um, I went to university and then I got a job part-time and now now I'm full-time but I moved or what whatever you so you can add all your different life events and when they happened um, so you've got ed work education relationship home and living and family travel all, all this sort of stuff and this can build like a nice little sort of timeline of, of when you've been doing stuff um, the other stuff, the contact and basic info again, uh, the email address is hidden at the moment. If you want, I would really avoid, to be honest, adding a mobile onto Facebook um, because on that application form, you can add one in manually, but having it on here, I definitely, if you're gonna have it on, don't have it on public. Um, same with your address as well. It's just not really good practice to just have that information out there. Um, Websites and social links. So if you've got like other social media, you can um, you can put your Instagram, uh, Twitter, Snapchat, YouTube, WhatsApp. Um, I, it must be a link. Yeah, LinkedIn. Um, all that, all that sort of fun stuff you can put in there. If if someone needs to get in touch with you on another on another platform, um, if you've got a website, you can put one in there. Um, you can add your interests in again, and that's another thing that can help when someone's viewing your profile. And these two here <laughs> the religious and political views i always try to stay away from because they can be quite um not off-putting but you don't what you don't want to do is to have someone look at it and because they disagree with you on one thing like just disregard your profile straight away so just just go steady with it really um again places lives that are not particularly massively important just be careful with what's on public and what's not i would have the basic stuff work and education fine um and then the other information, you can have it on there, your contact information, like your email address and stuff, but I'd probably have it hidden um, from timeline and I'd probably have it on friends. Yeah, you could probably have it on friends and then you can control who who you um, who you have on Facebook and you can block people in and stuff like that. So that, that's fine. Um, so that, that's your Facebook profile basically. Now any time you can come back. So if you go to home um, just saying all that, and you come back to your profile and you go back to say about, on the top here you can come in and edit this information I prefer to edit it on a computer because um, it's laid out a little bit nicer you can edit it on a mobile I just I don't particularly like the layout of how it is on your phone but it is possible um, <laughs> and he's saying there was no description just an ad yeah that that's probably how they got the, the trick people I can't imagine many people going through with it though hopefully anyway um, so yeah, this this is your Facebook profile. Some of the other stuff I would avoid. So things like um, you've got like your sports teams, your music, your films, um, your TV shows, your books, and, and your likes. A lot of that stuff Facebook uses to to target you with adverts. So I tend not to bother too much with this. Um, but the work the about stuff will all go into the like Facebook job search, as it were. Um, so just to, just to do a little test. So if I open back up the jobs link, so facebook.com forward slash jobs, it should give me adverts based on Sunderland. So it's, it's bringing up um, Sunderland and Newcastle jobs. Um, and let's just click on, let's go back to the KFC when we know it's safe. So if I click apply now, it loads up the little form there. And can you see it's dragged in all of my information that I put in before. So it's dragged in my name, my email address, the city I didn't put a phone number in so it hasn't dragged that in but it's brought in the, the experience and the education so because I filled that information in my profile it's dragged that information across to this little application form which makes it a lot easier so if you manage what's on your profile you don't have to um, 
spend as much time on the application process it should just be quite easy and, and like streamlined so hopefully that makes sense um, that again would work for any volunteer and internships that sort of thing um, that, that would be quite good equally you might have you might not be applying for jobs in the in the actual Facebook system so you might not be coming in here and searching for jobs you might have just applied for one elsewhere um, which is fine you know you, you can do that but there's, a, there's an interesting little stat here that, that I have found and it, it's up to 80% of employers will check Facebook profiles before hiring someone um, and over half have suggested that they have declined applications after looking at a profile so that, that's what you don't want you don't want someone to come to your profile and see like loads of pictures of you like you know lying in like a gutter yeah like wrecked I, 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 yeah <laughs> like wrecked and covered in your own vomit and that like Dr. yeah <laughs> like works at full-time sessioner is normally the one yeah. um, but that's what you don't want so you, you don't want people to be looking at that and thinking oh well, we're not going to give them the job because obviously that's that's not what we want in our company even if that's not you know that might have been one one night out like i don't know like 10 years ago or something and you just had a really bad time yeah that can like stay with you a little bit um if you've got yeah like overly political views at any point, i was just saying that you know what i mean it could be really like divisive stuff so yeah like, so in because i was just saying in your there's a section there on your i've just talked about it guys so daniel is on the board you've got religious views and political views it's fine to have them i just i don't necessarily think if you've got a professional profile you want to be sharing them you can do if you want i don't see it being a massive issue but personally i, I try not to um because it's not really what i would deem public information it's more to me private information um but yeah so the, the the overall point of that is that facebook you might think it's just like this daft social media that you, you just mess around with and like play games with and send each other like memes and stuff but bear in mind that if you are looking for work or if you're doing any projects with anyone someone might go on your facebook profile and have a little a little like mini stalk of you um the one way around it if you do want to have just loads of daft stuff on facebook is just having everything set to private like i've just shown you so like all your your, your information just have it on so it'll be the globe and that'll be public just have it on like only me or specific friends like i was showing you before um there is also one little thing I want to show you on Facebook if you if you don't want to set up a new account um, if I go to my settings here and I go over to this I believe it's privacy um, no, I always get lost so here so there's another little bit here as well so who can send you friend requests that's everyone um, who can see your friends list you can change that from public who can look you up using an email address you've got that everyone um, same phone number uh, do you want search engines outside of Facebook to link your profile so i.e. like Google um, I've got that on yes but you could turn that a norm and someone Googles your name shouldn't come up with your Facebook profile um, what else have we got in here so if I click on timeline um, underneath there you've also got who can post on your timeline and um, who can see what others have posted um, You've got who can tag, who can see tags that you po post, who can see posts that you're tagged in, and that that sort of thing. See, so it, it's worth reviewing all this as well. Um, but in general, sorry, we've got the privacy even. Uh, so yeah, you can change all this from like public and everyone to have a little bit more control over it. Um, to, oh, just didn't mean to click on manage your profile there. Check a few important settings. So who can see what you share, how to keep your account secure. So there's a bunch of information on here as well. Your ad privacy, your data settings, and that sort of thing. So if you click on the data settings, uh, we'll next that. And then it's just a little bit of information on each little topic here. So you can change that from everyone to friends of friends instead of public. yeah so I, I think you're right i think they wouldn't necessarily need to know it so if you don't need to know it don't tell them <laughs> it's as simple as that really um like i say it's not what i would deem to be public information for me personally um now the limit thing i wanted to do was uh, i'll do that after actually so i'll just leave this profile signed in what i'm going to do is i'm going to go back to linkedin and i'm going to do the same i'm going to set up a new profile and show you guys the little um like the way it sets it up the little profile builder so when you come to linkedin 
um, dot com. Yeah, LinkedIn.com, and there's a join now button. So we're going to join now. Uh, we're going to type in that test email that I made. And we're going to make a password up. Just, just for, just for ease, I'll use my name because it was booting off before about not, not creating an account. Security verification. Oh God, I've got to solve a puzzle. <laughs> Let's do a quick security check. Touch the arrows to roll the ball. <laughs> that was bizarre. But there you go, now I'm definitely confirmed as not a robot. I don't know why it thinks that's me, um, me postcode either. I don't know where that's come from. <laughs> so it welcomes you, asks you where you are, um, location within this area, some of the next, most recent job title. Um, let's just for now say I'm a student and we'll, we'll be from the University of Sunderland. Not Harvard. <laughs> uh, degree. Do digital film production. That's what you did in it, I know. Yes, sir. Um, I did indeed. Indeed. Uh, specialization. I do that. So it's asking you all this this relevant information. Um, I'm sort of just making this up because again, I'm just going to delete this this profile once we're done. Um, I am over 16. Yes, yes, I am. Done it. Okay, so they've they've sent me a confirmation code again. So if I go back into my email, I get a weird pin. Paste that in there. Uh, green confirm. Are you looking for a new job? I'm going to say yes because then it's going to take me to the job search thing and I can set a little alert. If I didn't want to do that now, I can just skip. Um, and it'll then take me to the main job site where again, I can do a search. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go to the home button um, and click on my name there and that'll take me to my profile. So now, can you see the Facebook one was sort of just like a little box that was giving you like little prompts to do stuff. Uh, this one is a little bit better. <laughs> In terms of it tells you uh, exactly what you need to do so if I scroll down it's got me profile strength beginner and then can you see if I hover over it it tells us what's missing as well so I haven't got a position industry photo skills or a summary and if I just add a photo so I can either use the camera or I can upload one I'm just gonna upload one and again I'm just gonna use that hand-drawn oh dear didn't mean to zoom in that much, never mind. Uh, nice bit of rule of thirds, Daniel's photography course. You'll, you'll, you'll get that there. Uh, let's save that photo. It's Thursday, 10 to 12. 10 12 on Thursday. So there we go, there's my photo. Um, what else is missing? So, position. Uh, just going to close off. Yeah. So, where do you currently work? So let's say I am unemployed. Let's just say do not apply. Uh, got it. Or does not apply, sorry. Which industry do you work in? So we could select an industry. Um, I don't know. Is media going to be one? They always give it like some weird name, don't they? Media production. There we go. That'll do. Um, so now I've got, see, see now the strength of my profile has gone up. So intermediate. Um, skills. I had a profile section. Come down to skills. And then I'm gonna pop up and say what skills you got. So imagine this is building like your, your CV up. Um, so do video production, um, video editing. I wonder if Adobe's on there. 
Adobe Creative Suite as well. So I'll add five in. So I've got video production, video editing, Adobe Creative Suite. Um, what else? <laughs> Social media. Social media marketing. Digital media. So there's five skills there. I'm going to click add and that will be another thing ticked off. So now on my profile, um, I've got some skills there. There's a skills quiz I think they do as well, which is where like they take you through like what are you good at basically, based on some of the skills you put in. And there's, there's some there, so that'll give you a, re a result. I will quickly do this actually, so we'll do a Premiere Pro and we'll just get all the answers wrong. Oh, hang on, that's 20 minutes. We're not doing that, right? <laughs> Never mind. Um, you can go through that. Some of the features are pro features as well on LinkedIn. Um, so bear that in mind. Uh, you don't need the pro version of LinkedIn. You really don't. For, for what you're probably going to be using it for. Um, show recruiters you're open to work. So tell us what kind of work you're open to. So you see that little link there. Click that. It's asking for location, so I might want to add, say, not Newcastle in South Wales. New South Wales, sorry, not at all. Um, I don't want to be a director either. So I'm just going to add some potential jobs that I want to do. Um, so video editor, video producer. Yeah, so there's a few job titles there. That can be anything as well, but obviously I've got some very specific information that I've put in there. Start date, um, I might want to just put that for now because I might just be casually browsing. I might want to do full-time, remote, part-time um, internship and add that to profile. I like that little photo frame as well. I, I mean, okay, <laughs> sure, why not? So I added a profile. And then it's asking you there if you want to start a post. I don't actually want to start a post for now. But can you see it's added a little banner to my profile <laughs> picture that says open to work. I didn't know it did that. There you go, I've learned something new today. But then, can you see now it says open to work and that's going to display for all LinkedIn members. So if you click see details, it will then pop up with that information that, that I'm open to work and what, what type of work, which you can edit at any time. Um, obviously no one's viewed my profile because I've just created this account. Um, so I've got some skills on there. I've got some interests. I've got some availability for work. I've got some education. Um, some of the other things you can add. So the skills, the industry. Um, so I can add an industry. And again, put media production in there. Add some more skills in there. Video marketing, social media, digital marketing, add the profile. Done. So again, creeping up. Um, showcase your expertise. Done that. And then again, add a summary. So I don't think this they haven't been able to generate a summary because I haven't really added any information, but this is where you can add a summary of what you do. So you can talk about your years of experience in the industry, skills. People also talk about their achievements in previous jobs or projects and things like that. Um, so again, this is just your profile that at any point you can come in and edit um, and, and what's what's available publicly. Um, save the PDF. I haven't done this one before, so I just want to see what it looks like. So I've, see, I've downloaded my profile as a PDF. And it makes like this little um, summary CV like that, um, which to be honest, isn't the best, but it's better than nothing. <laughs> Um, and again, I think one of the other options is on the more bit, you can build a resume, which is obviously just a CV. Um, based on this, you get a personalized keyword suggestion. So, let's skip that. so again, it's just, you'll see in this guys, if you've been on like Indeed or whatever, and I'm going to show you in the second half of the, this, this morning, how to um, create a CV using, we're going to use Google Drive and Google Docs. Um, but we're also going to download it in a different format if we can and then re-upload it to like LinkedIn uh, not LinkedIn sorry in the 
Indeed and probably Monster if we can make an account on there as well. So basically, any information that's on here will will not nine times out of ten be public. Um, and and this is like a public facing profile, so you, you want people to start searching you, but you also want to connect with people on LinkedIn. And again, I'll, I'll let Ella cover like the connections and stuff. But the more people that you connect with, the more people will view your profile, and and you'll get a lot of recruiters on there as well. Um, but there also is the little job search bit. So if I go, I'm just gonna close that mini CV down. If I go back to that LinkedIn.com forward slash jobs, that'll take me to the job search bit. <clears throat> and can you see there, we're right back on this little job search thing and it's suggesting some things and, and I've got alerts on for those. Um, but I might just want to just have a look for um, Sunland. I'm just going to search for all the jobs at the moment. And I'm going to change the radius to 10 miles, so it's a little bit less all over the shop. And I'm just scrolling through. So there's one there, there's a promoted one there for Asda Warehouse Operative. Okay, so if I click apply, increase your chance of being viewed. Share your full profile when the job post. <coughs> share your full profile with the job poster when you click apply. So that I'll share their entire all the information that I've gone and put in. It's going to share all of that, and if I have that off, it won't. So it'll only do what you want. Um, and this one's gone to an external website, which you will find sometimes happens as well. Um, but because I've ticked that little, pressed that little box, it'll share that full profile with with whoever's reviewing all those applications. Um, and then there's the other little handy feature which I found on LinkedIn as well. You've got there, so your profile matches this job. So the skills that say these guys have posted, like the desirable skills, match the skills that are on my profile, which is where you get that little blue tick from, um, which gives you a bit of a better idea on like what jobs might be applicable for you if you're struggling a little bit. It might again might be volunteer and that sort of thing as well. Uh, Sue said hello, by the way. Hello, Sue. Said that guy that you keep busy. <laughs> Um, so yeah, that that's the the job search part of, of LinkedIn and Facebook, and that's how to create a little profile. Um, I'm not going to go into much more detail on that, but it is worth bearing in mind what's on there. I did quickly as well because you guys have obviously, well, you've definitely got accounts on different social media sites. It's going to be worth um, going through and reviewing some of your, your privacy settings as well. Uh, before we do that, though, I forgot I found this really handy link. Um, and this will this will tie into the, some of the photography work you guys have been doing. So uh, LinkedIn on their like little blog have ten tips for picking the right LinkedIn profile picture. So um, they're saying that it's a key element of your LinkedIn presence and and to be honest, your overall online presence. And the research has shown that just having just having a picture makes your profile fourteen times more likely to be viewed. So having a, a good picture will increase the chances that more people will look at it. Um, Number one, pick a photo that looks like you. <laughs> uh, we don't want any, any catfishing going on here. Um, but using high resolution images as well. So ideal size being 400 by 400 pixels. Um, make sure that your face takes up at least 60% of the frame so that you, they can actually see. Um, be the only person in the picture as well. Obviously that's that's one of the common ones on, on like, say like Facebook for example, you've got lots of pictures with, with, your, with your mates and that, or your family. So it might might not be obvious which one's you. Um, someone else to take the picture, so not having selfies on there. Um, choose the right expression. That's quite an important one. I always find that one a bit weird. Um, generally speaking, smiling can help put candidates at ease and make you look more approachable. So there you go. You have to smile. You have to be happy. Yeah, just like stare like right into the camera. Um, avoid distracting backgrounds. Wear what you'd wear to work. Take the photo in soft, natural light. Um, use filters wisely. So yeah, try not to, to put too much too much on. I think the classic LinkedIn one's like black and white, right? Yeah. Like everyone loves the black and white photo. Looks looks pretty professional. I'll put the link to that blog yeah, that article in in the um, the old chat now. Yeah, so there you go. That's pretty good if you are looking to take professional profile pictures, and obviously you've got all the skills now, thanks to Daniel. So you'd be alright. You'll, you'll, uh, you'll be winning. Okay, so quickly before we, we change topic, we're going to have a little look at um, 
the privacy settings on a bunch of different accounts so I've got some links here so to review your privacy and security you've got your LinkedIn um, and it's just let's go so it took us to the feed so you just go on the, the there'll be like a little bubble there and it'll be your profile and the settings and privacy and there's, there's a whole host of, of settings on here and so edit your public profile um, who can see your email address so let's just click on that uh, you can have it only visible to me anyone on linkedin um first degree connections are people that you've connected with secondary connections are like friends of friends who are connected with people um so you could change that who can see your connections uh, your connections or people you've connected with on linkedin um, so there's all these kind of settings here so who can view what uh, pure profile visibility should we show information from your LinkedIn profile to users of permitted services such as Outlook at the minute set the yes uh, representing your organization who can see your last name so you can change it so it's just like a initial so if you change it to just your initial it'll save that so it'll give you a little tick and close that so I'm going to abbreviate it now and uh, there's some quite important stuff job seeking preferences choose what information LinkedIn saves when you submit a job application um, and that's a little bit you can upload a, a resume or a CV and allow LinkedIn to save your resumes and answers about your work experience in life you can always change your answers when you apply next so that when you fill in one application form on LinkedIn then you can if you save it or you have this setting on it'll save it for next time which you can then edit um, there's a bunch of other stuff so there's like your ads but there's communications as well notifies notifications by channel so you can get LinkedIn notifications um, email push on you if you've got your device or if you've got your phone or tablet um, who can reach you so when someone invites you to connect it or anyone can come on your profile and click connect and then you'll get a notification for it um, it's definitely worth checking out all this stuff. So even just your basic stuff like your phone numbers and what's on there and who can view your email address, um, where you signed in, devices that remember your password, two-step verification might be well worth turning on on some of your accounts as well. Um, what else we've got? So you can connect things like Twitter and, and Microsoft and other other permitted services, but you'll you, they would pop up and say, can we access your LinkedIn? And if you didn't know what it was, you would just say no. Uh, if you did want to close it for whatever reason you can come down here and close your account and just say why uh, which I will be doing later on you can hibernate it which does like a temporary deactivation as well so if you know you're not really bothered about being on LinkedIn for that period you can just come on and, and sort of deactivate your account temporarily and you'll be changed to a LinkedIn member it'll say but it'll just be a blank profile basically now I haven't if you've if you're like me and you've got a thousand accounts on every different platform you might have another account so you can merge them together so here's the account you're signing in now you'll keep this account and the connections from the duplicate account will be moved to this one so enter the email address and password to duplicate the account so you basically if you've got two accounts you can import them into one um, if you remember the password which tends to be the the, the, um, the, the stumbling block <laughs> um, so yeah that's the settings on, on LinkedIn but it's definitely worth going through and definitely on your on your privacy one um, however see how your data is used so you can get a copy of whatever data is on there managing your data and activity as well uh, blocking and hiding as well that's quite a, quite an important one so you, you can add people to your block list um, one on Facebook that's quite important is we sort of clicked on this so who can see your future post friends yeah um, and you can what you can do is this sentence quite important. So this is what I actually did on my account because it was just a bunch of like garbage on there I've been posting in and sharing and all sorts. Um, I went on and I limited my past posts. So limit the audience or past posts you've shared with friends of friends of friends or public. So if I click limit last posts, um, posts on your timeline that you've shared with friends, with friends of friends. And public posts will only be shared with friends anyone tagged in these posts and their friends may also still see the post so basically all your old posts go from being public to not being public anymore um which is quite useful if you've been accidentally posting on public for years on end and you really you, you don't really want people you want to limit who can see it now as well 
um, and then you change you so you can limit your old ones but you can also change the ones going forward so you can see your future posts and you can change that to like say a specific group um, specify friends or you can, you can have them on public if you do want to be on public depends what you're going to use it for really um, but just just to bear in mind that you can come in and limit old stuff you don't have to just make a new account and come in and just like tweak um, who can see what and that, that's quite useful Facebook did that because they got in a bunch of trouble because they were like well someone's got like seven years worth of posts and they can't really do anything about limiting the privacy of them um, I am going to quickly touch on Twitter just because I, I don't know how many of you guys use it but it's, it's definitely one of the more popular ones in terms of social media sites so I'll be signed into the media savvy Twitter um, Twitter's pretty good when it comes to like it's account setting so basically if you're on the home screen of Twitter when you've logged in um, you just scrolling through your feed you've got this button over here and it's profile so if you click on that uh, sorry under profile sorry uh, more so there's the more button and you go to settings and privacy and then in there he has all the privacy information you could ever want in the world uh, so username Login and security, you've got your username, your email address, your password. If you click into security, um, you've got a password reset. So when you check this box, you'll be required to verify additional information before you can request a password reset. Um, something like a text message to your phone might work on that one. And that's because you don't want to get scammed by someone trying to reset your password and, and locking your account. We keep seeing two-factor authentication. Um, that's on there as well. So that's where, again, you get like a text message or you have to scan like a little code in an app, like an authenticator. Um, if I go back to privacy and safety, three of the settings here, you've got protect your tweets. So only show your tweets to people who you follow. If selected, you will need to approve each new follower. That's one way of limiting the information that, that people can see on your Twitter. It's just protecting your tweets. And obviously they'll only be able to see that if they then follow you and you have to approve that follow. Um, location information we've got it on on the media savvy account you might not want that on because it, it shows people where you've tweeted it from when, when you put it when you put a post on um, and then photo tagging at the minute we've got anyone can tag you but then you can change that to off you can have it off to all together or you can have it on only people that follow you um, scroll down to safety there's all sorts of stuff so display media that may contain sensitive information if you want that off that you might not see certain pictures or videos uh, mark media you tweet as containing material that may be sensitive that would be um, a lot of like new sites struggle with that if, they, if they're replaying like replaying like footage of stuff that's happened um, especially in America at the minute a lot of that's popping up a whole bunch uh, you got you can mute accounts you can you can mute different words as well so that you don't see um, tweets from people or from different containing different words and different keywords in block account as well um, on Twitter. So Twitter's information, the reason I haven't really covered it in great detail in terms of profile is you, you, you can't, there's not really a lot of space to add that information. So on the profile, you've basically got your name, the company name in this instance, but you could be your name and then your, your username there. Um, and then you've got your location, a website, date of birth, and um, when you joined, and a little bio, like a little, um, profile like about section and that's to be honest pretty much it in terms of your Twitter profile you can edit it um, but as you can see there's not really much to put on there so this that would be a place where you might link to like your LinkedIn or your a website if you've got one um, or your Facebook or whatever um, but it's, it's to be honest the, the profile builder on Twitter not so great um, but the settings and privacy do have quite a few options um, so I'll just go back in here just real quick scroll right down the bottom so personalization and data so this is where you just turn off your ads um, if, if you want to as well because I know so you were saying that your adverts do your head in so you, you targeted adverts you can turn them off and you just get like random ones which then aren't as like creepy because <laughs> it's not stuff you've been searching recently um, so yeah you, you don't have to have that like your email address and the website and stuff in there you can literally have nothing in, on your profile apart from your name and maybe location as we've got it just as UK so we don't even have like a specific location on there you don't have to actually show your date of birth either 
Um, so yeah, that's Twitter. So we've done Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. There's one I just want to quickly go on Instagram as well. And I know a few of you guys use Instagram. Um, so this is, I think, my actual Instagram account. But all you do is you go on your settings. Um, so click on your profile picture. Go down to settings. And there is a privacy and security tab there. So you can, again, similar to Twitter, you can make it a private account. So when your account is private, only people you approve can see your photos and videos on Instagram. Your existing followers won't be affected. Um, if you have that on, again, it's the same as like protecting your tweets. No one can view your stuff without um, your say so, basically. Um, show activity status, allow accounts you follow and anyone you message to see when you were last active. So that's another one that you might want turned off if you don't want people knowing when you're on the app. Um, allow sharing, let people share your story as messages. I, I never post any stories anyway, so it's not a problem. <laughs> the photos of you, again, this works similar to the, the tagging. So add automatically, it's when someone tags you in a photo, um, you might want to add manually so that they don't appear on your profile. Um, if I click a view account data, it will show me um, all of me like changes that I've made as well, and all the accounts I've blocked and things like that. Um, I think if I go to edit profile, I need that's inaccurate for starters because I'm not at 25 anymore. <laughs> um, I might have just doxed myself a little bit there, but never mind. Whoops. <laughs> but yeah, you can see your email and there's my phone number, which to be honest, I think you guys have got anyway. It's on the end of my email address, so if you if you wanted it, there it is. <laughs> um, so you can change like your email preferences as well um, and you push notifications and that sort of thing. But definitely review your privacy and security and just, just have a little look at this. Um, if you click on the support thing, there's a bunch of things about managing your account and how to do it. If you guys don't do two-factor authentication, it might be worth having a look. Um, Sue's got to go right soon, no problem. I'll speak to you soon. Um, yeah, it might be definitely worth looking. It's definitely worth looking at your location sharing as well. Um, just to... Just, uh, Oops. Yeah, just to see if it's on. Um, you, you, to, you don't when you post on Instagram, it, it's like you're optional. You add it in. Um, I think there is an option for auto, but I don't have it on auto. Um, but this this help section is pretty good for sorting that out. Um, and that's pretty much it in terms of the social media websites and, and the profiles on there. Again, just coming back to what we we talked about in the um, in the e safety presentation. Ella did. She sort of touched on it. I just again want to just quickly recover. We're gonna have a break in a second as well. Um, so it's just about being careful what information you give out that like you wouldn't tell a stranger. But it's also um, where's it gone? I've lost the slide. Uh, wait, I have actually lost the slide. Yeah. So. This is what happens when it crashes and I have to reopen the presentation. <laughs> ah, photographs, there we are. So yeah, back back to this one. Um just bearing in mind what's on there. And if, if you're using Instagram and Twitter and Facebook for your like personal use, so it's just to like go on and, and talk to friends and family and that's all then that's fine. Um, just bear bear in mind what's on there, basically, and and try not to, um if you are applying for jobs, try and limit what what's visible publicly. Um, LinkedIn can be a really good one if you are looking for jobs because it should be top of the list when you search it. So when you, when you search for someone's name in Google, their LinkedIn should come up quite high. We're going to test this now, and it's not going to work probably. Um, yeah, so it's in in order. <laughs> Uh, my Instagram's come up, my LinkedIn, and then Twitter and Facebook. So they're all there. So when you, when you have that on, so you've just Googled my own name, um, and they're all there. Um, apparently, I'm in company's house as well. That's good. Um, yeah, so the, all, all my social media profiles are there visible as well so that bear that in mind if someone if you've applied for something or someone's googled your name they will come up and then if you click onto them you'll just see their profile so i don't think so there we are um for some reason it's not loaded me picture which is a bit weird um 
so yeah, but then and then there's all the information that I put on on my main profile as well. Um, so you can see that, and, and that, that's how it would be visible to someone looking at your profile from from the outside. Um, and just see all the different things. So you can view like your skills and endorsements. Um, and see who's done it as well. So yeah, I will leave it at that. What we're going to do next, I'm going to I'm going to quickly take a break. So I'm going to jump onto um, the Google Sheet. Google Docs, sorry, and we're going to have a look at making a CV really quick. Um, so, let's go back to Google, and I will drop this onto a break screen, and I will be about five minutes when I set up the next bit. Probably going to grab a tea as well. Um, won't be long.
<lacht> okay. And we're back. So, I'm going to do this in Google Docs because it's, to me, the easiest one to use. It does have an iOS app now as well, which I have not tested, but it definitely does because every time I open a doc in it, it just starts kicking off about why haven't you opened, why haven't you downloaded this app? So it, it has an iOS app. It'll have a, it obviously has an app on um, Android as well. So you can edit things sort of a bit more on the go. I don't particularly like doing it on a on a tablet because I don't really find the keyboard very usable. But I actually don't mind creating documents on a phone because it's just like typing in a text. Really, you're a bit limited with your your styling options in terms of like making stuff bold or underlined or whatever. Because you have to highlight a word, it's a bit harder. Um, but it is doable if you if you don't have access to a computer. So. I've made a Google, you will need a Google account to do this as well. So obviously remember I've made that media set, that test media savvy 30 at gmail.com. Um, with that in mind, it might be worth you creating a Google account. You can do it on Outlook as well. Um, Cause there's a service called, if I just go to Google and just type in um, Word Online. So Word Online by Microsoft is, when it loads, and I will show you exactly what it is. It doesn't look very happy. It's just like, oh, there we go. And it'll ask you to sign in. Um, and I will try and sign in if I can remember my. So I'm getting all. I'm actually I'm doxing myself so hard today. <laughs> getting all my email addresses. To be honest, it's pointless email in this one because I never check it. So. Okay, and I've got that two-step verification in, so now I have to send a um, text message to my phone, which is fantastic. Yeah. Uh, no, I don't want to stay signed in. Which is very important if you're on a shared computer as well. Don't click yes, stay signed in or remember password or anything. So this is Word Online. So um if you can download different templates so i'll show you both i'll show you google's um google sheets as well so to get the google sheets from the google home screen you've got the little grid full of like squares and if you scroll down you've got docs there um i don't really want to take a tour to be honest um so this one is google docs here so let me move my camera again just in the way today. Don't go there. Uh, so yeah, so you've got on both of them. So on on Word Online, which is this one, uh, link to like your OneDrive and stuff, <clears throat> and then you've got Google Docs, and they both have different templates. So they have templates for all sorts. So we'll start with Word Online, um, and we'll click more templates. And if we scroll down. Can you see there's all sorts of like wacky and funky stuff going on. There's a branch calendar and a family chore chart. Um, not that I know why you'd really want that, but never mind. Um, collaborative paper, simple student report, uh, business letter, that sort of thing. Uh, explore all templates in the bottom right will take you to a new page. And I can then browse by category. Um, and if I think it'll be under resume and cover letters. And you can get some very simple CV templates. So reference list, chronological resume, vertical design. So you can download that one. Um, and that gives you a very simple and basic template that you can grab from there. I like, I prefer the way Google Docs works in terms of if I click on the template gallery, it just loads the resumes here. Um, and you can just scroll through and have a little look. So you've got things like project proposals, meeting notes as well. Um, if you're looking to type up any meeting notes, or like it may create a little newsletter. There's some stuff in there as well, really cool. Um, a brochure, there's some, some really good stuff on there. Um, for now, I'm just going to keep it nice and simple. So on my Google Docs, I'm just going to go for resume serif. I'm just going to click that and it will just open, hopefully. And it will open in Google Docs, which is just the very simple editor here. Yeah, so you've got all your options along the top to change your different text. Um, 
and you can literally just click on them and change. So take out your name, and put it, type in your actual name. Um, you'll see this text here, and it's Lorem Ipsum. That's just like filler text when they haven't done anything. It's just like default text that people put in there. And you've got things like experience and then all the different jobs, education, projects and stuff. So that is a really, really easy way because normally, well, I mean, I'm just going to say back in the day, but it's not quite back in the day, but when you were typing up a CV before and you weren't going from a template, you'd have to sort of style it all yourself. So you'd have to come in and decide what, what you want, different colors and, and what size you want the text and stuff. But you know, you can, you can still do that. You can still change the size of this. So you come in and get experience one. You have that be like size 18 instead. Um, if you wanted these to be a little bit um, bigger. Oops, I'm not, I made all the text that. Didn't really mean to do that. So you can make the headings bigger, for example, but just the headings and nothing else. So highlight all those headings. Change them all to 18. So now they're a little bit bigger, yeah. And again, all these fields should be editable. So this one's got like some columns in it. Um, so it's got like a little table, but you just kind of see the outline. So this is in its own little box, and this is in its own little box. We missed one of those off, so we'll just go back and type in everything there. But there we go. So I've, I've took a template and I've edited it slightly. Um, you could as well change the color if you really want to do. Um, I would go. I would stick with something quite simple. To be honest, I think that blue that they have picked is quite nice. Um, but you could if you want to do. You want it to be readable. That's the that's the other thing. You don't want it to be like a really bright, horrible color like uh, that. Because now that contrast between the white, you, can, you cannot really see it, or I cannot see it anyway. Um, it's not great. You want something that's quite striking and quite easy to see and read. Um, I have got an article here that I want, if you guys are creating a CV, it will be worth you having a look at. Um, and it's 20, t 20 CV tips um, for 2020. So remove the word curriculum verte as your title so a resume you wouldn't want it to say resume as the title um, it's a waste of the cv space so on the actual page you don't want it to say cv or resume or anything like that uh, be strategic with bold caps and italics so again we're using bold caps here um, and we're using bold on the, the, the school name or the company name um, the italics are after, so the italics are coming in, say, the job title. Um, choose an attractive, readable font. That's probably the most important one. And the, on this one, the fonts are slightly different. So the heading fonts are different to the text fonts as well, and that's another way you can you can do. It can make something look a little bit more um, vis visually appealing, I would say. But just you need to be careful and be consistent with it. So you, if you're doing like this one, these block caps ones, these are all this open sans. You don't want one of your headings to accidentally be a different font. So if I change the font on this skills to Arial, now that looks different. Uh, that wasn't too bad an example, but if we pick say, if you see now, they're completely different. So you want them to be the same. Because um, now now this looks out of place. This looks like it's, it's referring to something else, uh, which it shouldn't be. So we're going to just change that back to open sans and never like they've said it in that article never use comic sans never ever that's not allowed i, I don't think you'll get very far with a comic sans cv and um, but just be, just keep it in mind that if you're not if you're using more than one font make sure you use it consistently your titles or if you're using it on like the company name school name that sort of thing keep it consistent try not to, to deviate too much from it um, I will pop the link to this in there and you can have a little read through that um, what one of the important things they've mentioned on it that I do want it to um, to sort of talk about is read the job description and read it again 76 seconds the amount of time we take to skim over a job advert 50% uh, of those who applied are unqualified for the job so if you're applying for a job but your CV doesn't reflect any skills or experience in that job um, it might be worth tailoring it a little bit because you might have the skills but you might not have included them so you might need to tweak your CV 
to fit that particular job that, you, that you're going for. Um, be concise. So the, the sort of golden rule that everyone says is one page normally. But if it, if it does go on to two pages, because it might do with things like references, um, that can tend to be like a big bulk. Um, try try not to get it any longer than two and, and try your very best to use things like bullet points are very short um, like shorter descriptions on things so this these ones have got like a sentence worth of space after them this this particular template as well is quite good because it's got let's use the columns so instead of this experience going across all the way from one side to the other it's just put in this little column here which is freed up some space on this side to put some more information in um, you, you'll see from all the templates that they are quite well laid out but again you can come in and you can edit different things so you, you know you can instead of being bold these could be underlined for example um, if you wanted and again this this might be this text underneath might not be big enough to read so you might just want to make that like 12 instead of 9 like that and then it just brings that up a little bit um, you might want to take the Stuff over there. Uh, on the awards, you might want to make them bold. That's because the colours on grey. So you might want to make the actual award name as imagine that was the award name. You might want to make that black instead of grey, and it makes it stand out a little bit more as well. So we'll just do it on all of them. And I'm gonna I'm gonna use this as an example. I'm not gonna change it so it has any details, and I'm just gonna leave it with all like the the random text in it make them black fortunately I don't speak more than one language Daniel might be able to do some Chinese for us <laughs> that's as multilingual as it's getting this morning unfortunately again might want to change the font on here as well might want to make this um, something different so it stands out a little bit more go for like a nice aerial on the top there so I've got like a like the the I've made a little few little changes to that that CV um, that will save in the drive so that that will save in my drive. Um, you can make it ready for offline use as well by just clicking that the little cloud and then the turn on button. Um, at the minute, it's just saved in my drive called resume. If I want to change the name, so if I want to change that to, I can just click in that box and spell my own name right would be just amazing if that was possible uh, Hatham Torfik CV yeah and then what I might want to do next is I might want to download a copy so to do that I'll go to file um, and then you can see download is the option there and there's all the different options to download it as the different like formats the the standard one that the standard two that I would always recommend would be either a Microsoft Word document or a PDF and I'm actually just gonna do both so I'm just gonna do file and download PDF as well as that Word document. Now the problem you might run into and the reason I've showed you on Google Drive is you might not have Microsoft Word and it is quite expensive to get a hold of at times. Um, you also might not have a computer which means you, you, you like I say the app, the iPhone app and the Android app for Google Drive and Google Docs is pretty good so you can get away with editing a sitting like CV on there. Um, tends to work a little bit better on like an Android tablet in terms of the way the way it works like you can save your files as a PDF and things and, and upload them quite easily and uh, Apple phones are a little bit weird when it comes to saving PDFs they get a little bit confused sometimes um, but you can save it in your drive and there's a drive app for your phone so that it just will still work um, but if I show those in folder now and I just open them up um, so that's that's the PDF version, which obviously, as you guys probably know, is you can't edit that now. So like, I can't come in and just delete the text out. Um, but I've also downloaded a Microsoft Word version that I can open in Word. If I, download this, if I click Enable Editing, can you see I can bring this into Word and start editing? So I can take out different bits of it um, and then resave. So. I download the two versions, so I've got you know the the the, the best versions of them basically because I can upload them to different websites as well. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to create a little account on say Indeed and just import the CV. Now, obviously, my C the CV that I've made here has got loads of random text on it that like, doesn't really mean anything. 
if it was yours, you would be putting in like relevant information. Um, did I post the link to that CV? Yeah. So that's the the twenty tips there. They're, they're pretty good, to be honest. Very helpful. Um, cover letters. There are links. There are um, templates for cover letters in both Word Online and in Google Docs. I haven't ever actually written a cover letter, to be totally honest. But again, um, there's, there's a whole load of information out there about writing a cover letter. I think if you just literally Google it. In fact, is there a Yeah, I read they've got pretty good um, helpful articles on how to write a cover letter. Um, so I will also drop that link in there. The job sites are pretty good with they have they have a lot of blogs um, and a lot of what we call career, what they call career advice careers advice. Easy for me to say. Uh, and and there so like does your CV pass the seven second test rate? So we'll have a quick look at that as well then. Because I did I did sort of did allude to the amount of time we spend skim reading a job advert. Um, their their advice is keep it short. CVs are never one size fits all. Most recruiters say two pages is spot on, but it depends on how much information's on the, on that and how much you need to share. Any more than three, and it's going to be definite turn off the same. The key being to cut the fat. Um, ask yourself the question: Is this sentence relevant to the role that I'm applying for? And I think that's really good advice. Um, Ditch the cliches. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll pop the link to that in there as well, because again, that's a really good um, bit of advice on, on how to add your CV. So you, you're not looking to have too much information in there, and does it have a logical, easy to navigate layout? Well, I think this template does. Every section has got a heading, um, and in, in the head, Underneath that heading, there is the relevant information that you would put in there that isn't just this random text. Uh, it's saying there, ditch the cliches, so not having things in about being like an excellent team player, good communication skills. Um, instead, keep things positive and always back up your attributes with real examples. So, examples of your experience in the past would be good things to have on a CV of when you've been a good team player or when you've had excellent time management to deliver a certain project or you know what whatever it happens to be so I have downloaded that little template CV I'm gonna go over to indeed.co.uk which is a job searching site and I'm going to sign in I'm gonna create an account sorry with my Google account that I made earlier I'm signed into my personal account, so I don't want to do that. I'm going to go to sign in. I'm going to say new to Indeed, create an account. Put my the test email address in there. Create a password. Ensure that I'm not a robot by picking out a bicycle. Now, the picture is a bicycle, but it's that's actually a motorbike. So. Am I, am I gonna fail this? I think I might be a robot now, guys. Oh no, I'm not. There we go. I'm still not a robot. So it was easy as that. I, I clicked sign in. I, I put my email address in. I put a password. It needs to be verified. So that'll be the first step on most things is to verify it. So if I drop down the little account icon, verify your account. Uh, your email address is not yet confirmed, so send me a confirmation email then. And it's telling me there, it's been sent, so we'll just open a new tab, go to Gmail. And as you can see, all the LinkedIn emails are starting to spam, so that might be one that you want to check in your account settings as well as how many emails you can receive. So click the link on that verify email, email address confirmed. And we'll click continue. And the first thing, one of the first things that's popped up is you can do your search, but upload your CV. It only takes a few seconds. So if I click upload, uh, I can build a new one or I can upload an existing document. So if I go to upload and just grab that CV document that I, that I downloaded before. Uh, and so we pre-filled your editable online CV. Uh, check for any mistakes we've made, refine using personalized tips. So let's click review. 
so it's going to have dragged the information in um, so first thing it's done first name surname yes city we'll just put Sunderland in there because I don't think I included that don't actually want my phone number in there but equally it's telling you who's going to view it as well which is quite handy so only provided to employers you apply or respond to only reply only provided to employers you reply or respond to um, if you check show my phone number and indeed it will show it publicly which you don't really want to do um, education hasn't picked any up um, so it's got a little bit confused but you can add that in there so it hasn't pre-filled that but you could add it in um, so you would do uh, I don't know why I'm putting my actual school in. it doesn't exist anymore this school either so So I'm just gonna make up a bunch of details for education and then just hit save. Uh, so that's there and then click next now it's, it's dragged in some of the information from the the CV but obviously I left all that like, dummy text in there um, so it's missing job title so you can add that in there and save it I'm not gonna do that for now uh, I'm just gonna click next and then it's asking some skills so include three to five of your top skills again what you'll notice when you're setting up all these profiles is asking you similar questions so this is something that um, LinkedIn was asking before so you can, you can have your LinkedIn profile open and see what you put on there and just duplicate that um, Again, it's picked out the skills that I had in there But it's all just that lorem ipsum text so it doesn't really make any sense But it will if you've put some stuff in there, it will bring it in um, So we can add some skills so we can do Microsoft Office um, Adobe Creative Suite again um, Editing marketing social media marketing I think that'll do so we'll click next and then it will have this information here so it's telling us as well what's missing which is quite good and this is like your online TV you can add different sections so you can add your awards and stuff like that in military service if you've got it um, patent nice publications yeah and then if, if you were this is at the moment set a private so this CV is a private CV the CV is not visible employers cannot find your CV but you can attach it when you apply for a job um, public your CV will be visible to anyone in accordance with our terms your phone number and email address are only provided to employers you apply or respond to your street address is only visible to you that to be changed it to public um, you can delete that you can download it as a PDF so that you've got a copy of it if you don't already so you can build your CV in here as well it's just it don't, doesn't look as nice as some of those templates so if I just show you what it looks like when you download it from indeed uh, you see it's pretty boring it's, it's pretty bland to be honest it, it's better than nothing um, but I, I prefer to go with one of these templates that's a little bit more like spruced up so you can replace it with a different one if you do update it um, you can also visit the help center which I think it's just like there so it's it's how do I view it um, how do I download how I change the visibility that sort of thing so if you get stuck with any of the technical stuff the help center on indeed is pretty good um, if I go back to just the main site so I've, I've uploaded that I could now apply for jobs with that or voluntary positions or whatever it is if I did want to come back to it got the little profile icon here and then I've got CV so if I click on that it will just take me back um, and it's it's given me like a progress bar along the top to see how um, like how complete it is so it's saying I had at least one job title so obviously it's telling me that there's information missing um, and it's highlighting what information I need to fill in and it, it's as straightforward as that really and um, just making sure you press save when, when you are done um, on about me as well so it's on you click on your about me so I'm available to start immediately again similar to LinkedIn um, what you're interested in your job preferences you decide salary per year month week day or hour you can add in there as well and whether you're willing to relocate or not as well so again 
that's all information that could potentially be visible to potential employers um, and it is worth just reviewing that information from time to time to make sure it's still up to date I think especially with like if you are searching for jobs maybe you haven't for a while as well and maybe you're coming back and you're looking like I say for something part-time for example or you want to uh, get into volunteering and, and it might only be like a couple hours a week so you would come in and you could set your your part-time um, you know volunteer part-time um, you wouldn't have to put a salary in there and you're not willing to relocate you just save that so desired job types is now volunteer part-time and then that's employers doing the opposite way they're actively looking at people's profiles will be able to see that you're there and you'll fall in that category which is a uh, very very useful indeed indeed get it no um another quick one while we're on the subject of that before we start wrapping up towards the the zoom call this afternoon is going to be the national career service i do want to quickly mention this because we do have a bunch we have done a bunch of work with them in the past and um, they've been on the staying connected streams as well i believe um, but they come in our sessions when they're on in person as well and, and do little workshops um, anyone who did the set PD course we had a quite a good workshop in there as well so just just to let you loop you guys in about what they are so the National Career Service offers free and impartial information advice and guidance to help you with your decisions about careers courses and work um, it's available to people who live in England and supported by qualified careers advisors um, they do have set ones of Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland as well. So they have a bunch of different career tools, basically. So and they're, they're built into the website. So learning about things that careers that interest you, discovering strengths and skills, um, and finding the right courses and training as well. So I will again just drop a link to that in the old section of the video there. And I've got the the contact information on there. I know that they're probably the phone line's quite busy, but they do have a web chat service as well. Um, send them an online message. So there's a few different things on here. One of the ones that's quite important that we've we've took, we've covered up quite often is this skills assessment. Um, so on the skills assessment, you uh, it can be helpful at any stage of your career. So like when you're just starting out, when you're returning to work, are you looking for a change? Um, transferable skills are a set of skills that you're good at. Um, you can build them up over time through work, volunteer, and education and life. You can apply these skills to a range of jobs. So if we go, press the button to go to it, you do like a five or 10 minute assessment. Um, it'll give you a reference if you get halfway through it as well. So if we just click start, um, I'm comfortable telling people what they need to do. So we'll, I'm not gonna do this fully, but I will just answer a few questions and click save just to show you. Um, so if I click save my progress, I can get a reference code or I can send a link to me email, which I will do. Um, and I've already forgotten what that media savvy email is, so two seconds. So I answered a couple of the questions on that, that skills assessment. Um, and now I've emailed a copy of it to my email address. There it is there. So click on this link to return to your assessment and any time I can go back to that and it'll give me the results um, and, and sort of tell me what, what skills I have and what you know potential areas that to improve there are um, so if I go back to that link because there is a few other things on this so that that's really useful like the little skills assessment um, there is obviously the explore careers to so find the next one so you're just looking at job titles there so if we type in just um, video editor or the search it's like a job search so it's, it's bringing up um, applicable jobs it could be something like you know warehouse Type in warehouse, warehouse worker. Um, and then it gives you like a breakdown on, on how to do it as well. So this isn't a specific job posting by like a a, a a company. It's it's more like a breakdown of what that job would entail as well. So how to become one, you can get this job through apprenticeship, applying directly, and a little bit more information on apprenticeships. And how to get in them, you might need GCSEs, things like that. Um, you can go directly to this job. It's, it's usual to start through attempting or seasonal work. Uh, it's telling you about the qualifications you might need. 
it's also telling you about the skills and knowledge you might need as well so you'll need and then to be thorough pay attention to detail um, it's got some information on your restrictions and requirements so some of them need forklift truck driving licenses which is fine day-to-day um, -day tasks as well so what, what you'd be up to on in that job or role and um, the working environment the, the different career paths and progressions and then the apprenticeships and courses and it's got some links to them as well on, on where you could possibly do them um, and that's just on like the types of jobs so if, if I do go back to video editor search I want to see what it says about that so it tells you the rough average salary as well and your typical working hours which is quite good when when you could work as well evenings weekends bank holidays so on um, so how to become so yeah it's telling you there normally you'd need some kind of foundation degree higher national diploma degree or postgraduate course in one of the following um, subjects but it's quite good because it, it, it seems quite like they've got a lot of detail on there about any potential careers you might want to be involved with um, from stuff like you know I bet there's like retail assistant and stuff in here um, sales assistant there so that, that again is a bit more of a generic one and it's telling you what what you'll need so definitely check that one out so that was the under the section um, explore careers and it gives you a bit more information and point in the right direction there's also some information on find a course so if you click on explain explore free online courses um, there's, there's different levels of it and this is in the skills toolkit so there'll be one on here that we use quite a lot um, ringing in Daniel's ears will be learn my way so we use this one quite often um, so learn my way and make a click are um, provided by the good things foundation and they, they run through a level I'd say learn my way is probably the more introductory one that you might jump on first and then make a click takes those different subject and expands on them a little bit more so we are gonna have a little look at the make a click one but this is in the, sc the skills toolkit still so you've got your introductory courses learn my way make a click um, Microsoft Office Microsoft Outlook sorry um, learn for everyday life so there's numeracy everyday maths introduction to bookkeeping introduction to finance um, and then there's, there's the next level of intermediate courses so you've got creating a professional online presence um and you can join that at on um futurelearn.com so that one might be a good one so this one is like a weekly thing so there's, there's two weeks and it's two hours a week on that one so that one is a different course there but the thriving in the digital workplace and um, how to create great online content there's all sorts of stuff in the intermediate one digital skills social media for businesses um, and then there's advanced courses so fundamentals of digital marketing discovering computer networks Learn to code, um, programming essentials in Python, um, cyber security, staying safe online. But that's like an at home and work sort of scenario there as well. So that's the find a course and the skills toolkit. And um, we are going to have a little look at make a click. So I am just going to open it. But there's one other thing, one other section on the National Career Service website, and that is the careers advice section. So if you click on that, um, it just runs you through your different routes. So post 16 options, post 18 options, options with an education, health and care plan, and um, advice on a gap year, advice on if you've lost your job or if you've been furloughed as well, which is obviously a lot of people have probably been through in the last few months, finding job opportunities, um, finding by network and finding by job vacancies and how to get the job you want. This, this one's quite a really detailed section. So obviously we've looked at how to write a CV, how to write a cover letter, um, filling in an application form so we have been filling in a bunch of forms today um, just to sign up for the social media accounts so it, it, it's once you've had a go at it and you've done it a few times you will get get used to it some good interview advice as well which again probably going to cover in the zoom meeting just to, in, some interview tips on that um, how to answer common interview questions as well softer skills like communication and leadership and that sort of thing and any advice on volunteering so there is a bunch of information on there that's definitely worth checking out i'm just going to close some of these tabs down there we go so um, on the meter click you can search for specific items so one of them might be cv and there is a guide <laughs> wouldn't you know it on create a cv in google docs um 
which we've done so we don't really need to follow this one but you could if that's what you were doing something separate so we'll look for something different um, there is a good one on uh, where is it gone how to behave when you're online that one was quite good I thought um, so they go so while they're writing so email text I am and Facebook they're different to talking in person or on the phone a little consideration can be that so there's a whole different guide about how to do things a bit more professionally online as well and this is on make a click so if you've got a learn my way account Daniel correct us if I'm wrong you just sign in with the same information yes, as you learn my way account and, and you can have us down as a center as well. And I believe you don't even need the number now. You can just type in Media Savvy CIC as your center. Um, I will sign in with my uh, my way account. If I can remember the password. No, we don't recognize that. Type in um, Media Savvy Test or Media Savvy Share or something. Hmm. I've definitely got an account. I just don't know what it is. <laughs> Daniel at me to say CIC, and then it's just yeah. the usual yeah. thing about the. Um, Daniel at me to say CIC, .co.uk, yeah? Yeah. Password the usual about the numbers. Oh, without the numbers? Yeah. Ah, I mean. <laughs> okay. So sign in as Daniel Allenson, which is a bit of fraud, but he is sitting over there, so I think we'll, I think I think we'll be all right. Um, so if I come into here, I'm now signed in. Um, I can now start a different one. So if you go over to the subject, you've got your different resources there. The careers one is pretty good. Um, government support, the support by the National Career Service, as we just sort of mentioned. Um, there's some really good ones, and again, we're going to have a little look at like interview stuff um, in the Zoom session if if you guys want. Um, speaking in public, which can be quite a daunting one, but this this one is quite timely. So, how to prepare for a successful video job interview, um, and that is actually an Indeed guide. So, like I said, the the job sites have got quite a good and comprehensive like set of blogs on there, and this one's really good because obviously I think now more than ever a lot of stuff's going to be doing being done remotely, as you're finding out by listening to this video. Um, and there's just some tips on there, but again, we'll we'll. Have a little go through that on the on the Zoom call. I just want to make sure I've sort of ticked all the little boxes that we had to tick this morning. Um, we have included as well in the flyer how to make a universal credits claim. I do want to cover that for the last sort of ten minutes. Um, so again, this is through the, the .gov .uk website, um, and it's literally the URL. I'll just shrink the window down so you can see it the URL is that so it's um, universe so www.gov.uk forward slash universal dash credits slash how dash to dash claim um, and this is just a part of there's a step-by-step -step guide on there um, you have to, as far as I know you have to do it online um, but it'll tell you underneath what you need to apply so your bank building society your credit union so you'd be bank deals um, an email address, which obviously we set up. Information about your housing, rent you pay, um, all your financial information, basically so savings, investments, um, like shares or property. Pay any childcare costs um, if you are applying for that. You'll also need some of your identity uh, verification, so things like a driving license, passport, debit or credit card would also be good. Um, if you cannot do it online, they will phone you to try and help you verify your identity. Um, I don't know how it's working at the minute with booking appointments to go in as well because you can go in and verify your, your identity but I don't know how it works at the moment you'd have to ring them and it would be probably be local because local, certain local officers will have certain things in place depending on where they are and whatever the local lockdown status is at the time um, there is a helpline as well and it is an 0800 number so you can ring the helpline you aren't just completely on your own I think the application has to be submitted online and then sorted out like i say like verified possibly in person i think the initial step is to go online and go go through the apply now process um it's telling you here as well what you can use it for so create a universal credit account and make a claim join your partner's claim you can do all that if you've already got one you can sign in if not it'll prompt you um it's telling you there that you, you don't might 
you should check how applying for universal credit will affect your other benefits. So if you are getting tax credits and um, other benefits that may be affected, um, there's an independent benefit calculator there as well. Uh, universal credits replaces these, so there it's telling you what what it's going to replace. Um, I've read and understood. So I'm just I'm just going to jump through this. So it's there. This is the bit I wanted to get to. So you're just going to you'll need your username and password to sign in. So this is the massively important bit about creating that claim. Um, you need to fill these details in like we've been doing for all the other sites, but this one's really important because it will be linked to Universal Credits Claim. Um, if anyone has any specific questions on this, I don't mind going through it. I don't want to go through it here because I'd have to click and I don't want to use my details and I don't want anyone else to use theirs sort of thing. So this is how you do it. And I do we do have the link and we do have a bunch of advice on doing it. And I don't mind going through on sort of a case by case basis. But what I'd also be very aware of and, and bear in mind is you want to be on this gov.uk website and you want to see, make sure that this you've got this secure padlock you don't want to end up on on one of the scam sites um because if i just quickly google it let's go on the money advice service many people are being targeted by scammers offering government loans and grants link the universal credit claims um, there's no reason for anyone to apply for loan or grant on your behalf and if you become a victim this money this money will need to be repaid um, so the main way is a universal credit works is someone offering to apply for a universal credit advance payment on your behalf and taking some of the money as a fee so that's the other thing that people have been doing as well they've been trying to you know get your details so that they can um, get a universal credit advance payment and pay it into their bank um, and it's under your name as well and if you're not eligible for it you will have to pay that money back and it's all linked to your name and your bank so you need to be careful with people like third parties approaching you trying to do that because that, that's been quite a big sort of scam linked to universal credits um, some people have reported being approached in person as well by people smartly dressed claiming to be from the job center plus which again you know if, if someone's someone's coming up to you and trying to get your information Probably best not to give it to them. I think Ella covered it. Basically, what would you tell a stranger? You know, probably not me bank account details for starters. Um, but it can be a little bit. It, <laughs> they're targeting people when they know that they're sort of stressed, possibly about you know work or um, the the lack thereof or money or whatever it is, and it it, it makes people become an easier target at times. So just just be be vigilant. Um, if you've already applied for a universal credit claim but are waiting for your first payment, scammers will apply for an advance payment on your behalf and take some of the money as a fee. Um, they will ask you for your universal credit login details. So that, that should be a massive red flag there. You shouldn't be giving anyone out your, your login information. Um, and, and if you were to go in the job site, I think they'd get you to log in, but they wouldn't take you, your username and password. They'd get you to sign in on a computer while they weren't sort of watching over your shoulder. So yeah, just want to be aware of with the universal credit stuff. Um, and again, there is there is this step-by-step -step guide on the on the website. So that's again, I'll pop that link in the in the chat. There's lots of links today. They're all relevant, they're all useful. Um it's just a little bit further down about disability or illness as well. And if you've claimed it before, you'll usually need to make a new claim by signing into your account. So just making a note of those details and making sure you've got a strong enough password and not giving it out to any potential scammers. Um, but you can you can find out how it's going to be assessed. Um, you can apply for your advanced an advance on your first payment as well. So there is all this information down the right hand side, um, and it's like this step by step guide. So they've labelled it sort of one to five, um, even though there's six items in there, which is a bit strange. But yeah. So that, that's the step by step guide. So if you click on the overall one, it'll take you, it shows that in, in full screen. Uh, so check if you're eligible. Um, if you open that up and then it's telling you, yeah, this is how you might be eligible or not. So whether you're eligible or not, um, the new style, if you're out of work and then that sort of thing. So definitely worth checking out the how to make a universal credit claim. If you are, if anyone in particular is struggling, we can guide them through that as well. Um, and that'll just be a case of getting in touch via email or in the Zoom session if, if you want. But I think for now, because I am going to look at some interview techniques and we're going to look at some of the make, make it click stuff this afternoon, but I think we will call it there for now and I will email out a Zoom link just before one o'clock. In fact, I'll schedule it now and I'll email it straight out and we'll get started at one. Um, 
we can talk about pretty much anything that we've covered this morning. I've covered a lot. I've been through a bunch of the different websites. So if you want us to go back over the privacy and security settings and where they are on certain websites, we can do that. Um, I've got that test account. Are those test accounts now? So we can just sort of like change all the settings and it doesn't really matter. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it there for now. I will set up that Zoom meeting and I will email the link out to everyone. Um, I know some people had to go as well this morning. So if you can't make it this afternoon, did we record the last one, Daniel? Yes, the, the digital skills based one. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It as well. I'll, I'll I'll record it. Um, and you can catch up as well. This video will still be on here as well. So if you do need to watch, if you are watching back as well, um, and you do have any questions, shoot me an email. I mean, you, you've got you've seen about a million different email accounts that I've got. The hate the map media savvy one is the one you want. Um, you've possibly got me on Facebook as well, which would be probably the easiest way to get in touch with us if I'm being honest so yeah um, have a little break for dinner so we'll have an hour and then I'll be back on zoom see you soon